Well, back in the 1980s, a part of South Louisiana gained a nickname that was as frightening as it was controversial. The seven parishes along the Mississippi River between New Orleans and Baton Rouge became known as Cancer Alley. That stretch of land is home to more than 83 chemical plants and nearly three quarters of a million people. But is the label of Cancer Alley fair? David Hammer reports as part of our series, The Toxic Truth. Um, Bobby Taylor grew Probably. up in St. John the Baptist Parish, um, then moved to California as a young man. One day he came home to stay, but for the worst of reasons. My mother, that's what brought me back here from California in 94. She had a very rare cancer. Taylor's family home is just blocks from the DuPont Denka plant. It's the only facility in the country that makes a synthetic rubber neoprene using a chemical called chloroprene, a chemical the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency says likely causes cancer. An EPA study in 2015 found Taylor's neighborhood has the highest risk in America of getting cancer from breathing the air. I did a lot of traveling when I was living in, working out of Los Angeles, and everywhere I went I heard about uh, cancer Alley. I had never heard of that and I lived here. St. John is part of a seven parish area between Norco and Port Allen known as Cancer Alley. When did this start? After the Bhopal accident in, in India. Environmental activist Ann Rolfus remembers the 1984 chemical release that killed more than 2,000 and injured half a million. After they murdered essentially uh, a significant number of people. That same year, workers at a BASF plant in Geismar put up this billboard calling their plant Bhopal on the Bayou. <phone rings> Activists joined the workers, and in 1988, they chained themselves to the Interstate 10 River Bridge in Baton Rouge to hang a banner saying Cancer Alley. Geismar is at the heart of Cancer Alley. This little town is home to at least nine different chemical plants. And here, the highway forms an actual alley between two of them, Oxy and Shell. The redder the parish on this map, the higher the cancer risk, according to the EPA. The seven Cancer Alley parishes, St. Charles, St. John, St. James, Ascension, Iberville, East Baton Rouge, and West Baton Rouge are all among the highest in the state. The name Cancer Alley has stuck. And it's stuck for a reason because it's true. But is it? Now, instead of looking at the risk of cancer exposure, we looked into the actual rate of cancer cases, as measured by the LSU Tumor Registry. Several Cancer Alley parishes are below the state average, and only Iberville is significantly above it. They've been collecting data for over 50 years. They collect it from every source. Louisiana Environmental Quality Chief Chuck Carr Brown trusts the tumor registry data over the EPA's calculation of risk. You can walk up any street and knock on any door and you can ask the question, has anybody had, in this house had cancer? And the answer is going to be yes. That's 100 percent. But is that really a statistically significant method of collecting data? But environmentalists have been questioning the tumor registry data for decades. How can it be no, Cancer I mean, Alley if the cancer you know, rates yeah. are not higher than the statewide average in that area? Yeah, if you have an institution that is not fully funded and is not doing a thorough job of understanding cancer from the point of view of the people who are sick, then to me, that agency does not have the accurate statistics. Taylor says that's because the people living closest to the chemical plants tend to be poor and black and don't have the same access to doctors who can record their illnesses. And when you look across the map at most of these industries, you'll see that it will be poor, primarily black people who are affected by it. William Riley ran the EPA for the first President Bush in the late 1980s and early 90s. He found racial and economic disparities have a real impact on environmental justice. We called it environmental equity, which I established at EPA as a priority and an office. And Cancer Alley was one of probably a dozen uh, places where there were claims on the part of residents. But Riley says it was hard to connect illnesses to the pollution. When they did statistical analyses on the, the incidence of disease and compared it with averages elsewhere, they were not able to confirm that, that those claims. Like this one from a Chemical Workers Union documentary in 1988. 17 years old, that boy died with cancer. Never smoked, never drank. 
I think it really behooves an agency to get to the bottom of that, and that means conducting some pretty thorough and possibly some expensive, but certainly more extensive research than we have. Rolfus has a less scientific method for proving the risk is real. Where does the plant manager of Danka live? I assure you he does not live uh, right next to his facility. And up and down the Mississippi River, that's true. That's a fair, uh, you know, comment. Jorge Lavastida uh, is the plant manager at the Denka Coroprene plant in St. John, and he commutes from Baton Rouge. But he's also spent 28 years working many hours inside chemical plants, and he's convinced they're safe. You know, we have uh, annual health checks and, uh, and uh, all kinds of uh, facilities uh, to make sure that, uh, that we're okay. So I, I'm not sure where the, the term cancer alley uh, came from and uh, you know, wouldn't have any more comments around that. Since the 1990s, the tumor registry has refused to release cancer rates by zip code and Taylor thinks they're hiding something. Is that wrong? Of course it's wrong. How do you the know that? because the federal government came in and made, uh, did their, their investigations. David Hammer, Eyewitness News. The tumor registry declined to be interviewed for this story, but a new state law requires the tumor registry to release neighborhood level data starting this year. And we'll bring you that information as soon as it's released.